Hello and welcome to another video in this series called Beautiful UI in the Marine Forms. In this video, we'll be looking at implementing this beautiful onboarding screen. Uh, we're going to, to animate it, we're going to make it to auto scroll, and this is the result that we're expecting. So expecting to have this result at the end of the day. The, the, the screen will auto scroll every five seconds. Okay, without wasting time, let's get started. All right, so I already have a, a project here called onboarding. So the first thing we're going to is a blank project. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, let's install the plugin for our carousel. We're going to be using a carousel to, to undo our scrolling. So let's go to the solution uh, node. Let's click on manage get package. Right click and select my package. Now the first thing we want to do is to make sure that we have the latest the marine forms installed. Um, so let's make sure of that. This is the marine forms is um, six 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 one. Yeah. So let's install that. Accept all the license. Okay, so now that we have that installed, the next thing we want to do is to install our carousel. So let's search, we're going to search for carousel view. Carousel view. And uh, we're going to be making use of this second one by Alex Rayman. So select and select all the projects and install. Accept all the license. Okay, so now that we have this installed, the next thing we are going to do is to make sure that we have the carousel, um, we have it initialized in uh, the respective uh, projects. So I'm going to go to uh, Android, let's go to the main activity, the CS, and right down here, immediately after initializing the, the marine forms, let's do carousel, carousel, Carousel view renderer. Dot init. So I'm going to do a control period to bring the namespace out here and resolve it. Uh, uh, let me do this again. So now let me let me mention at this point that there is a carousel uh, view that is coming to the mine from 4.0, but it's currently still in preview. So I'm not going. Uh, I'm not using that because uh, I want to uh, demonstrate something that is uh, production ready for you. Immediately the carousel view, embedded carousel view for the marine from 4.0 is released. I will do another video to address that. So if you we, when we're trying to resolve this namespace, you see that we have two uh, different uh, carousel. We have the one for forms plugin. We have another one for uh, platform Android. This second one is the inbuilt carousel. Uh, view that uh, that uh, is native to Android. So the, let's select the first one. It's the first one, the carousel view dot forms plugin dot Android. That's what we're going to be using. So uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the app delegate for iOS and right immediately after initializing the summary so forms, I'm going to put this right here and also resolve the namespace control period and select the first using statement. All right, now we are good to go. So let's start to design our view and see uh, how to implement the carousel. So the first thing I'm going to do right in the main page XAML is to remove all this. I'm going to create a grid and uh, that grid uh, is going to have a horizontal and vertical fill option to set to fill and expand. So I'm going to do horizontal option fill and expand, vertical option fill and expand. Okay, so 
So for our carousel view, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring I'm going to bring a code snippet out here for sake of for the sake of time. I'm going to bring a code snippet. Okay, so I'm going to bring a code snippet in right here, and uh, I'm going to explain. Let me zoom a little so I can see all the, almost all the screens. Okay. So we have a grid right here that is the parent grid that, that's going to hold uh, control. Then we have the carousel view control. This carousel view control is in the namespace uh, uh, called uh, forms plugin, carousel view forms plugin. Uh, but uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do control period to bring out the namespace. See, we have carousel view dot forms plugin dot abstraction. So I just add that. So that has been added at this stage i like doing things like this because it saves me a lot of headache as long as i know the name of the control i can easily bring out the namespace okay um so we have our carousel view we give the name called uh, cv walkthrough they want to show the indicator uh, that's to show the page the pages that we have uh we want the shape of the indicator to be circle you can we have two options here circle or square then the indicator tint color wants to set it to light gray that will be the default color of the indicators then the current page indicator that is to show the current page of the carousel setting it to our pinkish uh, color here set the rotation of the carousel to be horizontal we want it to be flipping or horizontally if you want it to be vertical you can set it to vertical here the inter page spacing set it to zero we don't want any space between two pages between uh, the pages we set the item source to uh, binding to property called walkthrough items. We are going to be uh, populating this um, item. We have the vertical and horizontal option set to fill and expand. Then we want the transition to animate. So also right here we now have the item template. This is what is defining our items, uh, our uh, template. We will first we'll have an image. That image is a background. Uh, like you see in our in our uh, photo type, um, let me bring it out here. So we have an image. This is the image. We have the image. Then we have this frame. This part is a frame. Then we have a text. We also have an image. So let's go back and see. So this is the image for a background. Now inside we have another stack layout. We put a frame. That's what's going to contain the title. Uh, what is the the mountain, cities, and ancients? As we have it in our prototype. Then we have this label for caption that doesn't contain the captions that we have. Then the last one is the image for Chevron, that's the forward arrow. Okay, so now that we have these, next thing we want to do now is to go to our uh, main page, the xaml.cs, then we'll hook up our carousel view. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, because I know that uh, we have bindings in our XAML. Let's set the binding context of this uh, page. Let's set it to itself. So that any property that will be clear in this page will bind it in our XAML. Then the next thing we want to do is we want to make use of a timer. So let's let's show the timer here. Timer. Let's call it timer. Okay. So I'm going to resolve this new space. There are two new spaces this here that you can use you can use the system of trading or you can use system of timers so we're going to make use of the system the timers uh namespace here then next thing i'm going to do is uh i need an observable collection of items that uh, we're going to use so let's say private uh or private or public and make it public public observable you know what, let me just, let me just, like, for the sake of time, let me just bring this in from my other post snippet somewhere here. Let me just bring this in. Public observable collection, like this. And I'm going to resolve this first namespace, observable collection. Then uh, it's, uh, it's of type walkthrough. So we need a class for walkthrough here. So I'm going to bring in the class that I've created for our walkthrough. The walkthrough class has three properties. Uh, as you might have guessed, we have the heading, the caption, and the image. Okay, so we have this here. And the next thing I'm going to do is, I'll, uh, immediately uh, the the 
the page loads we want to be able to bind uh, our carousel to some items so i have a code snippet i'm going to bring in here what the code snippet is doing is a method that uh, populates the this observable collection this work through let me just paste it in so as you can see we have a method uh, that returns observable collection of work through and we have items we have this the first item the second item and the third items we have item we have the uh Nothing on PNG, so this is PNG and ancient on PNG, and we have our caption. Okay, so in order to use uh, all these images, I have, I have an asset, I have some assets that I've, uh, I've created already. So I'm going to bring in the assets so that uh, we'll have it. So uh, this is our assets right here. I have just four images. So I'm going to copy this and bring it into our. Uh, uh resources folder for ios um and um for android uh put it in drawables but for, before i can do that i need to do something like this uh, uh, okay so then i can paste Okay, so we have it for Android. So, so now that is set. Next thing I'm going to do now is to hook up this load uh, method so that the this method gets called. And the way I'm going to do it is that anytime you want to get this property, so I'm going to set the getter for this uh, to, to execute our code. So I'm going to say load. like this okay so i'm going to remove this it's not necessary it's not needed again okay now we have this the uh next thing we now want to do is on on page appearing when our page is appearing we want to be able to uh, initialize our timer and um, when the page is appearing we want to uh want to dispose our timer so what I'm going to do is right up here before this method, I'm going to bring in, I'm going to do, I'm going to override uh, the unappearing and on disappearing. So you see override on appearing like this. So I'm going to bring in a code snippet uh, to initialize our timer. So this code snippet. So we already have a timer up here. So we are, so we are setting to an instance of a timer and a time span from second, five seconds. We get the total milliseconds out of it. Then we set some properties. We want to auto repeat, auto reset. Yes, so that uh, the, the uh, tick uh, elapsed can repeat. They want to enable it instantly. They want to undo the elapsed uh, events here. So I'm going to bring in the events. Uh, let's just do this. I'm going to uh, generate a new event right here. Uh, so let's just let's just type this for oh, true. Okay, we are, we are coming back to this. The next thing I want to do is um, I want to override the on disappearing so that when it's disappearing, we want to dispose our timer so that we can free up resources. So we just say timer dispose okay so one thing I, I have to do before disposing is i have to first of all check if it is null so that i don't dispose it null uh, null objects so i'm going to do that by uh, doing this okay so now we are, this is where the work now is to set our our carousel to auto animate so at this stage now because our timer is on a different tray uh if you try to access the the uh, carousel at this stage we're going to get an exception uh, saying something about um, uh, some something that calls something uh, um, you know all this color color thing um, which I'm very sure you must have been familiar with so before we do anything uh, we're going to wrap it into a, 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 a different we're going to take it back to the main thread we want the main thread to invoke this action we don't want it to be on the thread that the timer is because the timer thread is not 
we now have access to the UI thread. So we're going to say device dot begin invoke on main thread. Then right here, um, we're going to set a method for it to call. Uh, so let's do an anonymous method here. And um, we have this. Let's end it with the semicolon. Okay. So, right in this method, what we now want to do is uh, we know that by the time the uh, after five seconds, we want the uh, the the carousel position to change, and the name of our carousel position is CV walkthrough. Then we can get the position property out. So uh, you can do it in different ways. You can say uh, position. Uh, so let's do it like plus plus equals one. So whatever position it is, we want to increment it. So if it's on zero, we want to take it to one. If it's on one, we want to take it to two. If it's on two, we want to take it to three. Now, if you look at our, our uh, prototype we have just two we have just um have just three uh, pages here so by the time the the process gets to the to the third page it's going you know, to try and error if you implement it like this so the first thing we now want to do before executing this is once we check if the position is two that is the third carousel you know the, the carousel is zero index from zero one two so if it's on already on position two we want to reset the position back to zero so we we'll do if cv walkthrough dot position equals to uh, what we want to do is we want to reset the cv walkthrough position. We want to set it back to zero. Set it back to zero. Then return. So we don't want uh, to continue executing. So if this is on position two, to reset back to zero, and uh, if not, it will add one to whatever position it is. Okay. So yeah, I think we can now test our solution as our project. Let's let's use the iOS project. Let's clean the solution, build, and run. Yeah, so there we have it. This is our onboarding page. Let's wait for it, five seconds. You see it's has changed. Don't mind the car, the, the uh, simulator, it's lagging a little. So every five seconds, this thing changed to a new page. All right. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, you can share it with your friends and your community. Uh, also, subscribe to this channel. This will encourage us to do more videos like this. And click on the notification uh, icon, that's the bell icon, so that you get notifications when we upload new content in this series. All right. Thank you very much, and I will see you in the next video.